you can crack them. Joe, let's go hit that spot where we caught those fish earlier. Sounds like a plan. I know that the jig is working, but it seems like th these fish aren't scattered out everywhere. And we, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not a pattern. It seems like a spot, that one little area over there. No, I mean, today, I mean, it, you know, it's been a couple weeks since I've been back in here. And it really seems like today these fish are, are post-spawn totally, and they're starting to get maybe grouped up a little bit for their summer pattern. And they're we, getting a little further out, maybe towards right, the main lake. Right. You know? They're moving out of this real shallow stuff here, and it seems they're kind of they're kind of filtering out toward the main lake. And we got them about halfway out in this bay, so we're we're gonna hit that area again and see if that's see if that's the case. But you know, a lot of times in the spring you can catch them all over areas like this when they you know when they first get back right. in here, but. It's definitely not the case today. You know what my daddy says? You don't leave fish to go find fish. Let's go catch some. There's a good one. All right. Oh, that is a good fish, Jerry. Nice fat one. Get right back over to our little area, man, and catch one first thing. Well, he honked it, too. That's good. a good fish, man. Nice. Solid three. Yep, good three-pounder. Boy, he swallowed that thing, Joe. Look at that. He did. He did. I yep. mean, inhaled that jig. Man, that's a fun bite, isn't it? And when they smoke it, man, I mean, I mean, that thing is halfway down his. He wasn't coming off. It's, you know, if you haven't fished the bait, you, 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 I know you're sitting there watching this fish, this lure going, it, it doesn't look like a lot of fun. It doesn't look like it's doing anything, but you can actually feel that, <clears throat> those tails kicking. You can feel those tails kicking when you're swimming it, just, just like, almost like a spinner bait. But when they hit it, just the strike is just so much more violent. Yep. Nice guy. Starting to get some clouds again, dude. Well, I'll tell you what, Joe, there's no doubt those fish are in this area right here. I mean, we pulled back in here after letting it rest for half an hour or so, and what, three or four casts, we had another good one. Yeah, you see my foot patting before? That foot right there? When that foot, when that foot's patting, that means we need to, when it's doing like that, got that nervous pat going on, that means I'm wanting to go back where we were catching them. I was, I was, I had that arms crossed, pat, foot pat thing going on, and I was right. I was right. It's not, I'll admit it. Yeah, I'm not afraid right. to be wrong. But we did rest it. A lot of times you got to do that. You got to go through an area. You, you beat it up. Your electronics are on. You're kicking the trolling motor around. You let it set. Come back through and whack a couple more. Game on. You know, Joe. Um, you know, this is, you know, this is not specific just to this place here on Lake Erie, but everywhere on the Great Lakes. I mean, if you think of, if I think of all the good largemouth areas that are on the Great Lakes, they're textbook. They're just like this. They're these backwater bays. I mean, you fished them over in Lake Ontario, and, and they're very similar. Um, Long Point Bay over on Lake Erie is another great place. It's these sheltered, fertile, weedy areas, and, and they're they're everywhere on the Great Lakes. I mean, all of them have them. They've got some tremendous largemouth fishing in them. And the cool thing is they get overlooked. Oh, totally. I mean, they don't get near the, the pressure. I mean, there's not them. another boat back here. Jerry, I, I, oh my God! Did you see look that at the boil, boil on it? Oh, dude, we're getting torched in here. Got it! Oh, I missed him too. You're a fish. Hang on. Right there. Watch it. Watch it. Put the camera on it. He's got it! Oh, dude, how did you miss him? That's three times. That's a big one. That's too. a big fish three times. You missed him twice, I missed him. Now we've got our lines hooked up. Oh, that's just crazy. Did you see him? I did see him eat it. He just nipped it. Oh, yeah, both times. I mean, he came up and grabbed at mine. There's like a little, oh, here, there's a bed there, Jerry. Yeah. There's a bed there. You want the trolling motor? No, 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 just, just cool, just going by. Drop it right behind the engine. It's a bed. We're gonna come back and catch that sucker. That's a good fish, man. Guarantee that, that fish is bedding a $100. There's a, there's a white spot there about the size of a trash can lid. There's no way, no way he was just feeding. That sucker was too protective. I don't get excited. I bet you that you would love to keep this a secret, but I know something. Last year, I saw in Bassmaster Magazine, they did a story with you on fishing Great Lakes largemouth. How'd that all come about? There's one right there. Little guy, grab that thing right at the boat there. 
Well, Joe, you know, that article came about. I mean, you've had the opportunity work, to work with a lot of writers. And, you know, and sometimes in, in fishing, um, you know, not that you run out of things to write, but you need a little variety. And, you know, largemouth fishing up here in Michigan is something that, that doesn't get a lot of attention. And, uh, you know, he wanted to highlight the fantastic fishery that we have here. And uh, that, that's how that article came about. Well, I know things like that have to help your business. I mean, you're one of the few guys that I know that make their full-time, that live in Michigan, that make their full-time living guiding for bass. And I know it's primarily smallmouths, but how often do you get the calls from that article or just from whatever? Guys just want to change the pace and they want to go largemouth fishing. You know, Joe, any time an article goes like that in National Magazine, you're going to get a lot of phone calls from it. Um, you know, usually what happens is a lot of a lot of my customers come from down south during this time of the year. The fishing's pretty much done by by then down there, and uh, you know we'll mix it up. We'll, we'll even though a lot of people come here for smallies, you know we'll mix it up, and nobody's going to complain about catching fish like this. Right. You know what I mean? It'll give us a little break sometimes from from the big water. Sometimes you have to use these areas if, if people come from out of town for three or four days, and you know it's inevitable. The wind's going to blow, and this is a great backup pattern to have very productive and uh, it's always nice to have it in your back pocket. And I'm guessing in a tournament in bad weather it could be a heck of a pattern too, couldn't it? Uh, it's always nice to have something like this in your back pocket. I mean, you know, we've, we've cracked 15, 16 pounds in here, you know, pretty quick. And, you know, on a rough water day, that can be, that weight can go a long way, especially in a multiple day tournament. Yeah. Where maybe yeah. you just got to get through one day. Yeah. That's as far to the back of the boat as I ever go, is right there. I'm back up front. Oh, good one. Good one. Oh, that is a decent fish. God, he smoked that. He did, thing. didn't he? Not huge, but man, did he crush that jig. This is fun, man. This is so oh. much fun. You just can't even imagine the bite. The bite is just awesome. This segment of Reel in the Outdoors is presented by Archie Lures. The jigs fish love to bite.